What's up Ninja Nerds? In this video we're going to talk about the Glasgow Coma Scale. If you like this video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and let's get started. Alright Ninja Nerds, so let's get into the Glasgow Coma Scale. It's commonly referred to as GCS in the medical field, which is our abbreviated term. So when you hear someone say a GCS of whatever number, that's going to be the score for the patient. So why do we use the GCS? We use it to determine the neural function or the level of consciousness in a patient. Typically related to some type of traumatic brain injury or something else that has occurred along that is decreasing their neural function. Why do we use this? The GCS is used to check the trends and the changes in the patient. Basically, you're going to be looking at your patient when you get report and you're going to see does their GCS match up with the GCS that you have gotten in report. This is very important because you're going to hopefully have an improvement in our GCS and not a decline. If you do see a decline in a patient, you want to make sure you tell the provider so we can give them the appropriate interventions. The score can be given from 3 to 15. Now, what's going to be going on with our GCS? Our GCS is our eye, verbal, and motor assessment. So the score of 3 to 15 equivalent means that in eyes, verbal, and motor, they've gotten one in each category, which is going to give them the lowest score of three. So remember that the lowest score for a GCS can only be three. It can be categorized into three categories with the traumatic brain injury or their level of consciousness. So if they have a GCS of three to eight, it is considered a severe injury. And if they are from a nine to a 12, it is considered a moderate. And if they are from a 13 to 15, it is a mild. So when you're looking at your patient, you want to make sure that you're looking at the trends of where they are. And if they drop into that severe category, there's a saying that the medical field uses, which is when it's less than eight, you want to intubate. So patient score can be impacted by a couple different things. So when you get report from the nurse coming on, you might want to ask, if they're in the 9 through 12, is that their baseline? Some patients may only stay at a cognitive level of a 9 to 12 in a moderate. And that has to do with them following commands or having some underlying conditions. Moving on, are they on any sedation? You're going to have some patients that are going to be on sedation or pain medication. So you want to make sure that you're also having that put into your score. So you have that in the back of your mind thinking, hey, this patient is a sedation patient, so they're going to be somewhere in the moderate scale or maybe even in the severe. And the last is going to be injury. Most importantly with the eyes, this is where this takes place. If a patient has a severe facial injury, their eyes may be swollen shut. So there's going to be no way you're going to be able to assess those patients' eyes. So with that being said, let's move into the eye, verbal, and motor portion of our scale. All right, Ninja Nerd, so we're going to move in to assess our patient. In the GCS, we're going to move into I. I is the first thing that we're going to assess, which is really easy if you're walking into the room and talking to your patient right away. So on the I scale, you can give them up to a number four. So the highest they can get is a four, three, a two, and a one. We have this written in here to show you. When you're assessing the eyes, the first thing you're going to look is, is the eye spontaneous? Meaning, is the eyeball moving around? Is it following you around the room? Is it looking around the room? With purpose. You want to make sure that your patient has got spontaneous eye movement with purpose. If they don't, if you walk in their eyes are closed, what you're going to do then is give them a verbal stimuli. So you can just say, hey, or hi, or Mr. So-and-so, or good morning, whatever you want to say to your patient. This verbal stimuli, if they open their eyes to verbal stimuli, they are going to get a score of a three. Now you're going to move into a painful stimuli. Now sometimes you don't have to give them a painful, painful stimuli. You can just give them a, a touch on the arm or anything like that to try to wake them up. If they don't, then you're going to move into giving them either the pen to the nail pressure. So you can take a pen or what we usually use in the ER is a syringe. Take a syringe and give them a light pressure on their nail. If their eyes open to that, then they're going to be getting a two. So if they aren't waking up to that, you can give them also a sternal rub. A sternal rub will help them open up their eyes, give them a painful stimuli, and you can give them a score of a two. If they don't open their eyes to any of this, verbal, they're not moving them around at all, and you're giving them a painful stimuli, you're going to give them a score of one. Now remember, Again, with this, if their eyes are swollen shut, if they've had some traumatic injury where they can't actually open their eyes and be assessed, then they're just going to have a one for now, but that's a one on a reserve, meaning that there's some underlying condition that we're not able to give them a proper GCS. Let's move on to verbal. All right, Ninja Nerds, now after assessing the eye, we're going to move into the verbal. So with verbal, we're going to be going in again and saying hi to our patient. Hello, Mr. So-and-so, can you give me your name and date of birth? And if they're answering those questions correctly, then they are oriented. 
If they're answering those questions incorrectly, they're gonna be confused. So, you can give me your name and date of birth correctly, great. You can't. I'm asking you your birth date and you're giving me the day today. I'm asking you what day of the week it is and you're telling me today's Tuesday, but really it's a Saturday. So let's keep that in mind. Oriented versus confused is answering the questions inappropriately. But if they're using inappropriate words, then there are three. So what does it mean by inappropriate words? If you're saying, hey, Mr. Weasley, when's your birthday? And they're saying, ninja, that doesn't make any sense. That's inappropriate words, so they're gonna get a score of a three. If they're using incomprehensible sound, so you're asking the patient, when's your birthday? And they're giving you a grunt or they're giving you a moan, that would be a two. And if they're giving you no response at all, again, no response at all, not even a little mumble, you're gonna be giving them a one. So for verbal, you wanna make sure that you're going through and asking them questions and are they answering them appropriate with appropriate words? Then you're gonna be giving them an oriented and you're gonna give them a score of five. If they're confused, give them a four and if they're using inappropriate words like ninja, they're gonna be getting a three. If they're only moaning and groaning, they're gonna get a two. Now let's move on to motor. Now that we assessed eyes and verbal, we're gonna move into motor. And with motor, you're gonna be giving the patient some commands or seeing how they respond to pain. So first we're gonna go off with a six. So with motor, if they can get a score of a six, it's if they're following your commands correctly. Can you make a fist? Can you stick out your tongue? Can you show me your wristband? Anything like that, lift your leg here or there. When they follow the command correctly, they will get a six. However, if you're going to say put an IV in and you're putting the IV in and the patient not only recognizes the pain, but makes a movement across their body, right? Cross their body to remove that pain, that is gonna be a sign of a five, okay? So they're able to localize the pain where it is, and they're also trying to stop it. They're making that motion, that effort across their body, across the cord to try to get to that pain source. If they don't, if they are only withdrawing from the pain, so you're putting an IV in, they're just pulling this arm away from it, they're not reaching over to try and stop you, but just pulling, that's calling withdrawal from pain. Same thing if you're doing the nail bed pressure. If they're just pulling their finger away, but they're not reaching over to stop, Again, they're gonna be withdrawing from pain. They're only gonna get a four. Now we're gonna focus down here on the abnormal flexion and abnormal extension. You wanna make sure you know the difference between these two and which one is giving you which score. Because of these two being very similar, they are very easily confused. And I want you to make sure that you got it through here, that you know which one is gonna be our three and which one's gonna be a two. These are gonna help us decide what kind of traumatic brain injury our patient may have. So with three, we have abnormal flexion. You're gonna notice here with our stick man, he's drawing everything in towards his cord, right? He is flexing, he's pulling everything in. With this, this is called a decorticate pose. So the patient is pulling everything in and is flexing everything really, really tight. We're gonna call this a decorticate and they're gonna get a score of a three. If you walk in the patient's room and they have abnormal extension, so you walk in the room and everything is extended, the patient is laying there, they're not moving, but most extension in all of their limbs, this is called decerebrate posturing. And with decerebrate, you wanna make sure you're noting where in the body they are having all that abnormal extension. Because sometimes it will only be on one side or it can be all it could be both sides of the body. And the last would be none. So if you walk in the patient's room and they're just laying there flaccid with no tone at all, no tone in the muscles and they're laying there and there's no movement even with pain, even with commands, then they're gonna get a score of one. All right, so now we've gotten to the point of finishing our GCS with our patient. But what does this score mean? Where are we getting all these numbers? Let's walk through real quick how we add them all together and get a score for a patient. So if you walk in the room and you're talking to the patient and they're opening your eyes, their eyes to your verbal stimuli, you're saying, hey, how are you? They're gonna get a score of three. So we're right up here, E3. And you walk in the room and you're talking to them, you're saying, when's your name, a date of birth, what's the date today? They're gonna get a score of V5 because they're answering everything correctly. Lastly, if you go in and you're talking to them and you're maybe putting in an IV and they're like, ow, and they pull and they reach over and they try to stop. You're gonna give them a score of five for localizes pain for motor. This would be giving them a score of 13, which is great. It's a mild brain injury. Could be their underlying condition. You're just assessing their GCS to make sure it hasn't changed over time. Now there is one important thing that you wanna keep in mind when you're doing the GCS is you're comparing it to what is happening right now to the patient as well as their baseline. Keep in mind that with verbal, 
there may be a chance where you give them a GCS score with a T after, meaning that the patient is intubated. This is common for patients to have an intubated score because you can't necessarily assess the verbal when they have a tube down their throat, right? So if they have a score where they, you walk in and they are moving their eyes spontaneously, which would be an E4, but they have a verbal of one because they aren't able to move or talk or move anything because of their tube being down their throat, and they're still able to follow commands, you can ask them, hey, can you move your arms? Hey, can you squeeze my hands? Can you do this? Can you do that? This will give them a score of 11. So they are intubated, probably for airway protection, but it's gonna be an 11 T. So you wanna make sure that that's noted, that their baseline is a T because this is them intubated. And if we took that tube out, they'd probably be able to talk to us over time. Okay, Ninja Nerds, this is our video on Glasgow Coma Scale. I hope it made sense. I hope you liked this video and you got something from it. As always, until next time.